Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the amazing tennis podcast. Today, Anya Prislan is with us and I'm so excited to have her on this podcast. She is an amazing tennis coach that is running her own academy in uh, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. She was a professional WTA tennis player for 11 years. She has so much experience in coaching high performance players um, in Germany, in Slovenia, in Spain. Really, she has so much experience. Uh, she assisted in preparations and organization of international tennis camps for high competitive players. And uh, she's just a strong uh, female person and individual and uh, an amazing coach, but also a great friend of mine. Um, and I'm so excited to catch up with her. Uh, I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. So welcome, Anya. Thank you very much for this lovely introduction. <laughs> You're very welcome. I tried really hard. <laughs> I'm really glad. I'm really glad that um, actually it's my first podcast. Yay. Yeah. You know, first out of many. So, you know, after this, you, you're going to love it. And then you're going to do so many podcasts after this. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it will be your first and last. We'll see. <laughs> so I want, uh, I want the audience to get to know you a little bit. Who is Anya? Uh, just a little bit of your background, where you're from, your tennis background, and how you ended up where you are right now. So, yeah, my name is Anja, and I'm from Slovenia. You know, people say Slovenia has the only, has the letter of love inside, you know. So I landed in the country, in Dominican country, where amor is everywhere. You know, <laughs> you go to the grocery shop, and they say to you, gracias, mi amor, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as a kid, I was um, I was in many sports. I l loved sports. I loved competing. And um, um, my father had a lot of balls in his apartment. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I started with tennis when I was uh, eight years old, um, but in the background, I was dancing. I was in jazz ballet because my mother wanted that I, I'm a dancer. You know, all the girls wanted to dance. So I went also to the dance classes. And my father was a adrenaline junkie. See, um, he had a motorcycle. And uh, when I was nine years old, I also had a motorcycle. So I was driving a bike, a motorcycle, playing tennis, um, dancing. And um, yeah, I got a lot of skills from that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes, but then the love of tennis uh, became so strong that around uh, 11, 12 year old, um, I started playing only tennis. Okay. Like I really, I was really passionate about it. Uh, not only like that was my hobby, but um, I love competing. My club back then started to organize tournaments and uh, you know, you start first tournament in the club. Wow, I won, you know, and then you want to go more and more and more and more. So I um, started playing national tournaments and um, in the categories under 12 or 14, I was really good. I was like in top five. That kind of motivated me in the way that um, the vision was sport, tennis, and um, it was something that I wanted to do also in the future. Um, of course, everybody wants, you know, when you're a kid, they want to be a professional tennis player or um, to be successful, you know, in, 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 in sports. Um, but I always had this um, feeling that I will be also good in coaching. I had a really good first coach, um, male coach. Um, he gave me um, a lot of discipline, a lot of mentality of no pain, no gain, which I don't like it so much, but you know, back then, and also this Yugoslavian mentality of training, hard training, no talking, no questions. You just do what I told you. Um, it shaped me in the way that I am right now. Let me just stop you there. Do you think like now as a coach, but we'll get back to how you ended up in, uh, in Dominican Republic. Do you think that's, uh, that's the right way? Do you think, you know, to coach, young players like no pain no gain discipline or do you have a different approach right now 
I have a different approach, yes. There are some kids who need that, who need this. I'm not going to say that if you say no pain, no gain, that that's, you're just going to gain discipline. You can have another approach and you can gain discipline. You know, you don't need to go over, always over yourself to understand um, what the process is, how to develop um, a player or, or by myself, if I want to go achieve some goals. Yeah. So um, it's, for me, it's very important to listen to the body. Yeah. Very important. Very important. And uh, also my style of teaching is that the, the kids they know when to know they say stop or when to go for more you know um i went a little bit out of this um approach that i had when i was young the, yeah that's interesting i feel like you like you said you know the yugoslavian mentality the you know and how my parents also you know not just the coaching you know our parents and how we were raised is just you know that that style where I mean, you have to, you have to just listen, you have to be disciplined, and it's just how the parents say and respect, which is, you know, it's good and bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's different approaches now, there's different researches that's done even with parenting and also coaching. So uh, for me, it's all about like finding that balance and getting to know the person, right? Getting to know the kid, even if it's a kid or adult, it doesn't matter who it is, but like getting to know the person and figuring out how to get to them and then from there you know you figure out your approach but you still have coaches that are just like yelling on the tennis court and I feel like you can get far with that but it, eh, it all depends I feel like we could talk about this all day <laughs> it's limited um, very limited yeah very, so, very limited. not so wide exactly I, mean, I, I think also this like female coaching of course, there are some females who were coached, introduced by this mentality, um, very strict. But I think a lot of female coaches are more open, more wide. I'm not going to say smart. <laughs> but we're smarter. <laughs> but, but a bit different, a bit different approach. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like men in like everything, they have a like this approach. They only see it one way where we are more open-minded and we, you know, I mean, both, both ways are good and bad, you know, mix of both would be ideal, but, you know, that's something that I talk about in my podcast a lot is, you know, difference between a female tennis coach and a male tennis coach, because right now in the industry, we only have a 23% of female coaches, the rest is male. And um, I, I always ask, uh, what do you think? Why is that? Well, what is your opinion on that? Why do you think there's less female coaches than male? We don't have, um, how can I say? We don't want to be so, we don't want to show ourselves so much. Mm. We want to be at the back. At the back. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, an, it's a quote, like behind every strong man, it's even stronger woman. Men, like I will, I will say to you how I do with my husband <laughs> because my intuition is really strong and sometimes I speak with him telepathically so I don't say to him but I kind of send him messages look this this needs to be fixed you know and this and this needs to be fixed <laughs> so at the end he does stuff and he's like well yeah I did that you know like but I know like yeah i know you did that because i <laughs> i sent you so many <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i sent you signals <laughs> yeah i think it's 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 that because women they they don't want to be um they want to be so outspoken you know to be outside you know we are more at the background this is how I, this is my perspective yeah I, yeah um and uh, this is also how the world was um in the world that we live in you know, you don't see many women in uh, politics. You know, you don't see many women uh, being on the top uh, CEO in, in uh, big companies. Yes, it's changed. Last year, it changed. The nature of the woman is more to be, I'm not going to say to stay back and do what the men say. You know, I'm not going to say that. But 
maybe we stay more at the back. We give signals, we give messages, we give instructions that men can do that. But do you think, do you think that's right? Do you think that's how it should be? Yeah. Like, you think so? Like, yeah. you see, like, I'm so different when it comes to that. Like, I'm, I, I agree with you with everything that you said, you know, it's how it, how it is, but I feel like it should, it should change. You know, like, I feel like there's so many strong female figures out there that want to be heard, that want to be there in front. But like you said, they're scared. They're, they're scared of, you know, talking out loud. They're scared of putting themselves on top in front of the men, you know? Um, I mean, because we're like, you know, I'm like that too, but with this podcast, with what I'm doing on social media, and I really want to empower other females not to hold back to be more confident to like step up to like instead of sending signals like you said to you know to their significant other or to a head coach or somebody to step up because you know uh, I'm not saying that we we know better or we're smarter but there are some females that that can do that and you know to go ahead and and do it instead of just being in the shadow you know Yes, yes, yes. No, maybe I wasn't stu- understood a little bit wrong, but um, what I wanted to say is um, in tennis, especially in tennis, because it's very male dominated. Yes. Um, a lot of female, they don't, they don't wish to go outside. Yeah. They're, they, they prefer to stay at home. They prefer to stay in their, in their club and, they, and teach there, you know, mm-hmm. because a lot of female, they decide to have families, you know, and to, to be a female, have two kids, uh, be a professional tennis coach, be outside maybe 50 weeks in a, in a, in a year on, on tour. It's very, very hard. Yeah. So a lot of females, they cannot afford that. Yeah, that's true. Were you ever, okay, did you ever want to be a coach on tour or you always wanted to have an academy? Like, did you have some goals like grow, not growing up as you were getting older, like, in what setting, like where you are right now, are you happy with what you're doing? And can you can you tell us more like um, about your academy that you have right now? Yeah, so back then when I was in Germany, I was living in Germany, um, I was actually a traveling coach and a coach in, in the club, which was a really perfect mix for me because I'm very adventurous, I love to travel. And um, this was kind of a good mix for me. I, mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, but back then, the business, the tennis club was not only mine. So I was, mm. um, I had a former coach who was running a tech academy with me. So he was more staying in the club, arranging stuff, and uh, I was coaching and traveling. So I could afford that uh, with, with kids. At the moment, over here, I am, we have a small team. So it's me and assistant coach from Colombia. Um, we are running an te- academy and my husband sometimes help on the tennis court as well with the little ones. Um, I cannot afford to, to travel with, yeah. you know, I say I'm going to leave business here and I'm going to travel, I don't know, even 30 weeks in, in a year, you know. So yeah. I think you need to be, you need to be a person for that to to choose. Okay, I'm just gonna risk maybe two years of my career. I'm gonna go for uh, to be a traveling coach, which is also an awesome experience. I loved it, but there is another benefit if you're staying at home and uh, actually running your own academy. How did you start your academy there? What what was the process and um, um, how come I you- in the Dominican Republic? <laughs> How did you end up in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic? <laughs> Let me ask you like this. Yeah. How did you end up there in your in Amore? Yes. So. You speak Spanish? Sorry. Speak Spanish? Yeah, I speak Spanish. Yeah. So, what other language did you speak? Oh my God, I'm sorry. I keep. It's okay. I, so, I, so my mother language is Slovenian. Then um, when I was a kid, I learned Yugoslavian, you know, Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, whatever. Yeah. Because we were traveling so much in this uh, in that countries, um, then I learned uh, German. I speak German. Um, I speak a little bit Italian and then Spanish and English. 
Nice. And I had a lot of Russian girls. I was coaching a lot of Russian girls. So yeah, I, I understand I speak a little bit Russian as well. Wow. Okay. Anything yes. else? <laughs> Anything else? No. no. <laughs> so how did you end up in Punta Cana? So in Germany, we used to be eight months indoors because the summer was just these three, four months. And uh, I was really sick of it. I couldn't stand anymore being in a hole, no air, always cold. And uh, I decided to move to Spain, uh, to Mallorca. Um, and I loved it. I loved it coaching outside on the sun. Yes, it's cool. It has a benefit and, you know, pros and cons. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I love it. Being on sun, kids super happy, uh, energy. And um, I decided to, to move to Dominican Republic because my husband back then was living there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he was living in the north part of the Dominican Republic where it's a lot of tourism. In Punta Cana is also a lot of tourism, but um, over there was like, pure tourism you know like no no locals who could play tennis um, and also to open up the business so we decided to move to Punta Cana um, because uh, a lot of companies are here and big gated communities so a lot of locals are living here so uh, I got the opportunity to build the courts in a sport club where we have football, soccer, uh, swimming, and gym. So we built up two tennis courts. Mm. And uh, this is how this, this, it started. So now it's two years that we, we're wow. opening. How did you apply to get to get to two tennis courts, like to build two tennis courts? Was it simple over there? Connections, connections. Yeah. everything through connections. Yeah, back then, before I moved to Punta Cana, I live like 20 kilometers away. And I was coaching a lot of kids from Punta Cana who were driving every day to my private co uh, court, which I had it over there. So, and they were like, Anya, please come to Punta Cana. We, we don't want to drive anymore. Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, you know, let's see the opportunity. I don't know any courts there. So, and then, yeah, through the connection, I got it. Awesome. No, that's, that's so great. And then... You built up the academy. How many? How many uh, kids do you have now? We have over than over than a hundred kids. Yeah. So, and it's only you and one more coach, or you have more? No way. Yes. How do you do that? <laughs> you work a lot. <laughs> Thank God. Thanks for taking away your time to talk to me. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, do you have Sundays off where you work on? Yes. Sunday? Yes, yes. Okay. Sunday, yeah. Sunday is my only day off. Like today, we can have a podcast. Again. Good, good. How, how does that look like? Like how many hours a day do you work? Uh, is it mostly groups or it's private? Yeah. Um, how do you, what do you do? How does your day look like? Yeah, we have uh, mostly group classes. And mm -hmm. in between, maybe like Saturdays, we have a lot of privates or in the morning during the week, we have a lot of privates. So I work between we can say six to eight or even nine hours per day. Okay. Um, and this is how we can manage it right now. Yeah. Of course, okay. we, have a, we have a vision to build maybe two more courts that is going to be a bit easier for us. Okay. Um, because at the moment, in this heat, it's hard. <laughs> so how is the weather there? Is it um, all year round? It's hot? Summer. And it's very similar to Florida, but... Yeah, it's it's uh, more humid and a little bit more warmer. So around like November, December, January, February, it's like maybe 26 degrees. It's pretty yeah. much the same like here. Like now it's like a little bit nicer in the morning. You know, it's getting uh, like a until like 8 a.m., you know. Uh, yeah, I, I know. But um, do you, is there a lot of rain during summer or no? Really. Yeah, I mean, you know, when it's hurricane season, um, we had, yeah, we had a lot of rain, but not, not that I say that it's a uh, rainy season. We don't have that. And do you teach, is it mostly like beginners or you have some high performance too, like a mixture of both? Yeah, because we, I mean, we're, we opened two years ago. Um, a lot of uh, kids started uh, new, there's the new sport. Yeah. So a lot of beginners 
Um, we have a couple of uh, kids who are also performance already in performance uh, tennis. Um, but mostly, mostly it's hobby. Yeah, recreational. Yeah, uh, just the sport. To family, do. family, very family oriented. Tennis so it's club. like more relaxed. There's not that much pressure from you as a coach. Exactly, right? exactly. But you know, European mentality, yeah. you yeah. want to hundred percent. Yes, so it's different. Exactly. Even if it's a recreational player, I still want yeah. them to feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a couple of recreational players who are super motivated. You know, it's like they want to be better and I give them everything and more, you know. Like, let's say you get a kid that's very good. How do you get them like to go and play tournaments because you're all the do you yes. have any kids right now they're competing or yes. no? Yes, yes, we have. We have around eight to nine kids who are competing. Okay. okay. Um, unfortunately, here in Dominican Republic, we have maybe a tournament or two per month. Um, the organiz organization wise, it's not as, as good as could be. Yeah. Um, because tennis a couple of years ago was uh, popular only for the performances, mm -hmm. the performance players. Um, so in the, um, in the capital, Santo Domingo, um, there's a national uh, tennis center, beautiful tennis, uh, tennis center. They have a lot of ITF under 18 tournaments mm -hmm. and um, 25K pro tournaments. Okay. A lot of them. Now, the last two years, we had, I think, like 10 or 15 tournaments. Okay. So in that direction, um, grown up a lot. But for the little ones, it's a little bit less. So we try to organize club tournaments or we have um, we have a club which is 20 minutes away from us. We do intercambio, you know. So, yeah, we try to to give them a lot of a lot of how can I say opportunities, opportunity to play. No, that's awesome. It's awesome how you're growing the sport of tennis, you know, there. And uh, um, it's I really love to see it, you know, like. Um, I follow, you know, your work on social media only, but you probably cannot spend that much time on posting because you're running a club of 100 kids, you know. Um, uh, so, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really awesome to see. Um, so what, so you said you have a goal, do you have some like, what are your goals there? Like, do you have any professional goals like for you know, with your business, you want to, you know, make it bigger, get more employees, more coaches. Do you have any goals or? Yes, definitely, definitely. Already with the um, with the kids. Um, last year we sent one one kid to to study to college, okay. get a scholarship. Also opening a little bit. Um, the knowledge about the tennis, what, what tennis brings you, what tennis can give you, um, because a lot of them, they don't know. Opening this vision that you can get a scholarship, you know, it's it's a lot for, for, for some of them, you know, who mm -hmm. cannot afford to go to, to study to United States mm -hmm. or even to study in the private universities in, in, in Europe. At the moment, we are very small and our vision is, yes, to become bigger, to have more locations, um that the tennis community is going to grow more like when you come to florida is every village every small town has a public court or have a tennis club or a tennis academy so i i think this is also possible here in dominican republic especially in this region of uh, punta cana bavaro so it's a big potential we have a lot of kids um a lot of people are moving to Punta Cana because it's expanding so much. It's like Cancun, which was 20 years ago, you know, and now Cancun is like, you know, crazy. So Punta Cana is, is becoming um, expanding. It's expanding a lot. I see also the potential for tennis, not for not just for tennis, for sports and, 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 and kids in general. How do, do you find it hard, like juggling, like running that business, obviously, but also being like a good coach on the court like do you do some things to stay on top of your like 
coaching game if if you know what i mean like um like educating yourself so like yes. different educations or uh, i don't know if you do that or do you watch videos like what do you do to to get better as a coach because i i don't know if you agree with this with me but like we can always get better right like you can always get better and learn something new like how do you how do you juggle that like running the business organizing everything and also do you find time to to do some of these things yeah no i do i do um i was always interested um, in different approaches so for me if somebody's thinking differently than me i respect that and i really try to get out of what he thinks it something that could be good for me also even if i don't i have a different uh approach or even different I'm thinking differently I I check a lot of I I try to check a lot of um, different approaches as um, for example Waratoglu or um, in the United States I love Joel Myers yeah I love his style I love it I I I try to learn from from good ones you know it's not that I I'm not a good coach but there's always something that, like you said, you want to learn something more. And uh, I, I, yes, I, I try to learn as much as I can from different parts, you know, not yeah. Spanish, Spanish teaching, um, French teaching, uh, yeah. American, Australian. So I try to learn different approaches. Yeah. No, and yeah, of course. And then you kind of like blend it all in, in your own style. You know, yeah. what would you say, what's your style or do you have a coaching philosophy? Like, do you have a like, you know, how how do you coach? What is your mentality when you're yes? I try to I try to learn the kids the healthy competition because um me as a professional player, but I'm not gonna say professional when I was professional player, when I was developing from from 16 to 18 to 20, something around there. Um, I was never over competitive. I love the competition. Um, I had kind of healthy relationship, um, but I, I was never this crazy person who was on the other side. I saw opponent and wanted to kill it. Never, <laughs> really. Um, as I remember, I was yeah when we went the, together on tournaments. I love to hang out with uh, with kids. Um, traveling, meeting new friends. Like I know you, you live in Florida, you know. I I have a friend in Australia. So this kind of connections, um, it's very important. Yeah. I think it's very important to have this healthy um, love relationship. You know, I'm, I'm not saying like love or like emotion, you know. For me, it's very important to 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 give kids, yes, this healthy relationship for tennis, for love, for tennis. I think this is also a big part why I'm here, because a lot of kids, they are, we have a couple of kids who are super motivated, you know, and they want to force and force and force. And then I, I speak with them, I talk with them, uh, how to find the balance from the start of the, when we started talking at the um, start of the podcast, we were talking about no pain, no gain. Um, this is what I've changed a lot for me that I, I don't give this to kids. Like, yeah, no pain, you need to do this nine hours, uh, yeah. not day free, you know, um, health, healthy relationship. No, that's so, that's so important that you put it that way, you know, because, I feel like the problem with a lot of tennis parents and tennis kids, they just get caught up so much in winning, competing, playing tournaments that they lose the sight of this healthy love relationship. Like you said, like most of my friends and, you know, all over the world, it's because, through tennis, you know, why have it's through tennis. And even if we don't keep in touch, like, on a daily basis I know I can count on you I know I have a friend in Punta Cana when I go you know mm-hmm. I, which I have to go to vacation <laughs> there <laughs> no but I was actually I went to Punta Cana but just to like one of the resorts I probably just went to like the tourist okay. not where you are but next time when we go because it's close by here you know um with three mm-hmm. hours three yeah. hours it's not bad and if I can mention something like um yeah. 
regarding this healthy relationship about competing, um, maybe, of course, as well, you know, many tennis players, female or male, they forced too much when they were kids, like when they were little, you know, and when they were 16, they said, no, I don't want to play tennis anymore. Yeah, I'm sick of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's too much for me. It's too much pressure. And there is this selection, you know, some of them become stronger, they go through and some of them, they're like, okay, no, I cannot do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important that, um, that every coach has different approach. So every kid is different. That, that's one of my coaching philosophies is like, like, like I told you before, you know, every kid, every adult, everybody is different. You cannot go and just like be like this, right? And just like, this is how it is and that's it. No, we got to open up, we got to, you know, search and find a way to get the best out of that person. You know, it's our job as coaches. Yes. So it's not like, okay, if you're not listening my way, no, you're not, no, you know, that's it. So, so yeah, you know, it, it's a learning process and it's always, that's what I love about this job and in this sport, you're constantly growing, you're learning that I think that every good coach is, you know, is very open-minded and is willing to, you know, take in other information and kind of, you know, evolve instead of just getting stuck in their own way. I have a few more just questions for you. <laughs> Do you have any routines? Like as a, because you're, you're, you're a busy woman, you're running your own business. Do you have some like routines that you can't go without today or like in a week do you write a journal do you meditate do you exercise do you do any of these things it's a good question <laughs> it's a good question um yeah like morning coffee <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a routine i can start my day without my coffee i try to stay as uh, active as possible so at the, at the start of the podcast I told you that I love tennis balls and I love balls and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I'm in a football team football female team oh my goodness that's awesome <laughs> yes we are a team of um, like 25 ladies wow different nations like Latin like Venezuelan Argentinian uh, Mexican American um, German you know yeah uh, Spanish so yeah, we have a team and uh, we play three times per week wow. uh, soccer in the evening. So after I finish my classes, <laughs> oh my I go and I play like 45 minutes or one hour with the girls. This is like um, so relaxing for me. Next day when I woke up, I'm like, wow, I, I have another energy, you know? Um, so this is what I'm trying to do to stay in shape. Um, because uh, as a tennis coach, you know, you're coaching a lot. And if you're just stuck on the tennis coach, uh, tennis court, um, there might be some injuries coming. And, you know, you want to take care of your body. That's awesome. You know, you have some, you have time for yourself, you know, and that's, yes. that's your yes. time. Yes. That's so awesome. Okay. So in this podcast, I'm asking different people that are successful in their life, you know, they're running their own business or they're working a lot or whatever it may be. It's mostly in tennis industry. But, you know, I ask everybody, how do you define success? You know, because there's different ways. Everybody has a different answer. What does success means to you? Is it money, fame, happiness? How do you define success? So my daily success is when I see happy kids. When I see them, when they're coming to the tennis courts and they're super happy, having fun. And then when they leave the court, like when they say, bye coach, you know, like, bye Miss Anya, you know, this is, this is like a daily success for me. Something that, that makes me really happy. The success for me also like is achieving goals, achieving goals, teaching kids, not, not just kids, also recreational players, adults. From five to 70, you know? Yes. <laughs> for me, it's like when they come, when they, for example, they come to, to me to a, to a private lesson, you know? And they come with, the, with the, the same mindset and mentality that uh, really are passionate about it. And then 
I give an, uh, an I give them just a little bit some correction or I tell them something and I see this that they're like, wow, Wanya, you really helped me a lot. So service to others. This is for me also a big a big success that I can service to others. Not just money, fame. I think this comes um, behind it. Comes with you yeah. after that. But service to others, um, it's it's a big thing. Yeah. No, that's great. I'm very similar when it comes to that. You know, like you gotta have that purpose you know and that in in your life you know and when you see that you're impacting someone's life you know no amount of fame money or I don't know it's like can't replace that feeling of how you feel when they're like exactly what you're saying you know when they walk off the court and say thank you so much or when you see the improvements it's like okay this is why you're doing this yeah no that's that's great from the parents when you get confirmation from yes parents. yes they write yes. me a message like anya thank you very much she loves to come to tennis court uh, yes. to tennis uh, um, uh, classes like tennis tournament you know this is what it's like a bless for me do you have a book that impacted your life that you would recommend to me and whoever is listening i'm not really passionate reader reader <laughs> No, <laughs> like my husband. I am so a visual type. When I see videos or when I observe, analyze, I love to do that. Okay. Yes. Uh, one month ago, I read a book. About... <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is this book. My husband was so happy because we were in Slovenia in summer, and uh, I was following one um, Olympian athlete. Brigitta Bukovic, uh, sorry, Brigitta Langerkorts. She actually studied university in USA. She was very, very successful. So I read her book like in two days and he was like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Like <laughs> two days you read her book, the, her book. I'm like, yeah, because her principle was very sport wise, athletic. Mm. So her biography, it also, when I read that book was like, okay, there are people in the world that they really think very similar as, as me and just gave me confirmation. You know, you, you need to work on yourself. Doesn't matter, are you an athlete or an engineer or you're a mom or, you know, you need to work on yourself mm -hmm. because if you're not going to be working yourself, developing the life will yeah yeah that, oh my god i love what you said there i i love what you said that like i i started liking books like maybe a year ago like oh. i'm not kidding you i was not also like like i was said but i would lose like interest i'm like oh, this is boring you know but lately i really like it i still get so tired at night and i fall asleep after i read two pages but yeah. but you know it's like it's about that personal growth like you're talking about, you know, books about personal growth, like they're making me a better person, just working on myself, you know, because you gotta constantly, like no matter what life brings at you, how busy you get, if you're not working on yourself, like you said, life is just passing by, it's just passing by, you're just living day in and out, and you don't have any purpose, you don't have any goals, you know, I think it's so, so important to realize that in your head, and you know whatever it might be it might be listening to podcasts i started listening recently more to podcasts it might be reading books it might be watching something whatever is your cup of tea you yes. know sure. but okay I'm, I'm curious about that book do you know the name of the book or no um it's no, in it's only in slovenian <laughs> thanks thanks for nothing <laughs> well maybe when she translates it in english we'll yeah. we'll read it too do you have anybody that inspires you my husband it, your husband there you go how come he's reading 20 books or what <laughs> <laughs> yes because i see myself as a really uh, relaxed open happy person yeah my life was not so easy as a teenager uh, i gone through like really big things i had a tragedy in the family my father passed away but this kind of um, shaped me the way I am. And I really uh, trying to learn every day. But my husband, he had everything. 
and um, no I really respect him and he motivates me so much because he's so keen on education learning reading books um, he's a super nerd you know um, and uh, sometimes when I am like oh I'm just gonna lay on the couch and you know have a a rest a little bit he's like reading book you know I'm like oh my god this guy is so motivated he wants to like be one percent better than like next day uh, the day before wow he's really uh, he really inspires me that's so that's so good I'm reading a book right now that's saying like getting better one percent ever it's talking about getting that one percent like uh-huh. then so it doesn't have like you should not have big expectations about being so much better right but like one yeah. percent but like it adds up and then you see the value um that's great that you have a husband like that it inspires you i'm sure like running a business and helping you there he, i have to get him on my podcast too i'm sure we would have Ooh. really good Ooh. he's good gonna stuff. talk he's gonna talk <laughs> 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 okay. he's an amazing speaker he's an amazing speaker uh, he, he has, has his own podcast right does he yeah genuine mm-hmm. athlete. okay good oh, good I'll, uh, I'll definitely reach out to him yes. <laughs> um, no this is this is great I'm so happy we got to talk there's so many positive things you know that I think we can get from this conversation um i really wish you all the best um and uh we we need to set up something where you know i come there to you um and uh you know maybe we do some training sessions you know promote it um you know social media you know put some female coaches together i have i have some ideas in mind so i'll keep you i'll keep you posted wonderful wonderful yeah Yeah. no it's been great yeah thank you for I had a good chat with you and uh, yeah keep doing what are you doing thank you thanks thank you for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please share it with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and a review to catch all the latest from me you can follow me on instagram youtube facebook and tiktok at tennis with emma thanks again and i'll see you next time